morning. My name is Dave Hernandez. I'm the uh, Director of Educational Development for the American Welding Societies. I'm here to tell you about uh, our advanced e-learning uh, component at the Society, uh, some of the things we've been doing. Um, one thing I wanted to caution at the beginning of this presentation was that there's only half an hour. So you're going to get maybe 30, 40 percent of what we actually have produced and what we're producing uh, in this presentation. So I thoroughly encourage you to go on the website, explore what we're doing, take a look at some of the things that are coming up uh, in the very near future because there's a lot of resources uh, that are being put out for uh, educators, for students, uh, for schools. So I wanted to start off by talking about Make Magazine. Um, I am a, I'm a maker. I like to make things. Uh, and as part of that, uh, I'm part of the maker movement, and I subscribe to Make Magazine. And this month's, uh, or rather this quarter's issue, uh, it revolves around teaching vocational education in non-traditional settings. You know, and I thought it was perfect. Uh, I got it last week, and I, when I was reading through it, I thought it was a perfect kind of segue to what we're talking about here today. And there was a particular quote uh, from one of the articles that really caught my attention. Uh, it said, vocational education has been based mostly on skills rather than the critical thinking about why we're using those skills in the first place. You know? and, and it really, in many ways, sums up what we're trying to do uh, at the, uh, in the society's education department. Um, one of the most troubling things that I've seen since I've been at AWS has been a uh, gap analysis, skill gap analysis that was produced by the Manufacturers Institute and Deloitte. And part of that skill gap analysis asked about, I think it was something like, uh, I think it was four or 5,000 manufacturing employees in the United States. And it asked, what are the most serious skill deficiencies in your current workforce? They identified in that same skill gap analysis that about 83% of those manufacturers expect a significant serious shortage in welders and skilled manufacturers over the next three to five years. And they were saying, we're not even worried about those. We're not even worried about the huge gap that you see coming. We just want to know about the current gap. And this is what they stated. Notice how the first thing they talk about is inadequate problem-solving skills, which is a nice way of saying critical thinking skills. The next thing they talk about is a lack of basic training. The third one is inadequate, inadequate basic employability skills, which is something that I hear no matter where I go in the United States. Um, fourth, in inability to use technology, just basic technological use. Five, inadequate math skills. Six, inadequate reading, writing, communication skills. What I find fascinating about this is that one of those six items up there has anything to do with what we traditionally call vocational education or tech education. So what they're telling us is, look, we have people that know how to weld. They just don't know why they're welding <laughs> or what they're doing. So the moment that a problem occurs, the moment, the moment that they have to step outside of a mechanical exercise, things start to fall apart. Now, why is this dangerous? Why is this dangerous in our society today? There's two primary reasons. Anyone want to guess what any of them are? What either one of them are? Thank you. We're, we're, I think according to the countdown, the Terminator's coming very soon. Skynet's about to go live because we're getting to a point where automation is getting to a, is getting to a price point where it makes sense for a lot of companies to be able to turn to automation. Right? So if I can buy a robot who can do what you can do faster, cleaner, and of the same quality, of what value is the individual? Second issue, globalization. We live in a global economy. The San Francisco Bay Bridge extension is being welded in China. Not welded in the United States, not welded by American welders. It's being welded in China and shipped over to the United States. Why? It was cheaper. And we got great quality, such great quality that when all the welds got over here, they all cracked and we had to send them back and do them again. <laughs> but because of the nature of globalization and robotics, we have to turn to look at our own workforce and say, what is it about us that we need to change in order to keep welding in the United States competitive in a global environment. 
So in many ways, these two issues led to what is known as American Welding Online. Okay? Um, American Welding Online is an online learning community for educators, students, welders, people that want to advance their careers, that want to learn about welding and move forward. Uh, we're actually going through a process right now of changing the name of American Welding Online. Uh, moving forward, and you'll see this happen in the next several months, moving forward it's actually going to be renamed AWS Learning. Okay? Uh, we felt that it was a much better uh, kind of title for what we're trying to do. Uh, there's a great story as to how American Welding Online came up. There was a lot of market research that was done. Uh, we did an extensive analysis of different names across the marketplace. No, I'm just kidding. It, it was literally Ray Shook, who's executive director of AWS, and I sitting in a room for about five minutes saying, what are we going to call this thing before it launches? <laughs> if you want to take a look at what we're doing in American Welding Online, if you want to read about the different things we're, we, we've done and some of the things we're doing, and if you want to take a look at anything that I'm talking about today, it could all be reached by going to awo.aws.org. So it's the same way you would go to the AWS website, except you hit the awo dot in front of it. So what is American Welding Online? Well, right now, um, what most people know about American Welding Online was that it was formed in the mid-2010, mid uh, mid to late 2010. Uh, we kind of put the foundations online. Uh, we, right now, we have nine asynchronous courses that range anywhere between three and 23 hours in total play length. Uh, we have over 120 modules of study uh, and about 135 hours of content. All right, about more than 25 hours of those content are available for free to anyone without having to register or log into anything. You could just get access to it. Uh, but actually, American Welding Online is a lot more than that. Like I said, it's an online learning community. What I want to talk about today is some of the things we've done, some of the things that are available to you as instructors, some of the things that are available to your students, and some of the ways that this can be used to help uh, deal with some of these issues. But before I get to that, I wanted to talk about what our vision was for American Welding Online when we started. Um, we had a very clear idea of what we wanted to do. Uh, our vision with American Welding Online is to share our passion for education by creating an online community where anyone interested in welding can discover and learn regardless of nationality, education level, or socioeconomic status. We believe that it is our responsibility to help close the growing skill gap in the welding industry and to help drive welding as a preferred state-of-the-art manufacturing process. We live this on a day-to-day -day basis, and when we sit down and have meetings and determine what is the next project we're going to work on, or actually to be more accurate to what we actually do, what are the next 30 projects we're going to work on at the same time, um, we look at this and we say to ourselves, how are we going to help the industry move forward? With that in mind, we kind of simplified everything down to this simple idea, and we call it A3. Everything we do is about A3. It's about bringing welding education to anyone, anywhere, at any time. If we can accomplish those three things with any one of our projects, then we feel that we've been successful. The second thing that we focus on is STEM education. Um, like you saw from the skill gap analysis uh, that I showed you there, one of the big issues that we see in welding right now is the lack of STEM knowledge in welders and in manufacturers. So every one of our courses focuses not just on teaching the science and the art of welding, but also making sure that the individual who's taking the course walks away the STEM knowledge they need to be successful. And the third thing is really identifying areas that we can, that we can help close skill gaps over a long period of time. So right now, uh, products and services that we offer, we offer online courses, we offer virtual conferences, training libraries, blogs, podcasts, apps, Sense Online. Um, these are just some of the key ones that we offer. I'm going to talk briefly about them all, show you a little bit about what we're doing. But I, like I said, I'm only going to be able to cover a very small part of what we actually do. So I thoroughly encourage you to go online, take a look, and explore for yourselves. So the way we do our seminars right now online, our courses, is we give people 24 hours, seven day a week access. You can connect anywhere that has an internet connection to it. You don't have to install software. This is about as easy as you can possibly make it to actually take an online course. Um, one of the things we're working on right now is that we're working on moving all of our course material over to HTML5 from a flash base. This is going to make it a lot easier for people to use their phones and their tablets to take our courses around the world. And we do have a, a fairly broad international audience aside from the United States. I'm going to show you a little bit about some of the things we're doing with our courses that are interesting. So um, our courses are not just point and read, click and read courses. These are interactive courses. 
We have a lot of high definition video and, and you know, uh, presentations uh, from senior CWIs. Um, we use a lot of uh, graphics and animations to show what we're doing, interactives. Uh, we do things like we've built in glossaries and quizzes and things. We, we, we do interesting things like this. Uh, we try to do adaptive learning. So this is one of the ways that we do adaptive learning. This is a what we call an info tab. Um, throughout the course, students see this. Anytime that they see a term that's highlighted in this way, if they don't know what the term means, <coughs> they can actually click on it and it branches the course off for them. So in this case, this is from our safety course. Um, if, if we're talking about electromagnetic radiation at this point, if you don't know what electromagnetic radiation is and you want to know more about it, if you click on it, it'll actually branch the course out to you give you a nice little two, three, four minute explanation as to what electromagnetic radiation is and then bring you back to where you left off. And if you do know what it is, you don't have to. You can actually just keep moving forward and it doesn't, it doesn't impact your ability to take the course. But the course tries to let you, the student, uh, adapt to what it is that you know, what you need to know and what you feel you already know. We do this in other ways. Uh, this is also from our safety course. Since our safety course is based on Z49.1, we've, we've actually, built in the standard to the course. So while the course is playing in the background, it's asynchronous. So, you know, you have professional narration going on in the background. You have, you know, notes being put up on a board. You have pictures, images, videos playing, games going on. While that's going on, you're talking about parts of a standard. So what we did was we embedded the actual standard in the course. So all a student has to do is if they want to read the actual part of the standard is put their mouse just slide their mouse right over in the top right corner there over the section they're talking about, and it'll bring up that part of the standard for them. They don't have to download anything. They don't have to, you know, be opening up a separate file to go study. It's all embedded into the course right there. Now, they have the ability to download those documents if they want to, but we want to make it easy for them. Uh, we, uh, we have all sorts of pre-quizzes. Uh, in, uh, in our classes so that you can determine whether this is a module of study that you need to cover, whether it's something that you already know. Uh, we have uh, explanations for everything that we do in our quizzes, so anytime we have a quiz or an interaction, we make sure to walk the students step by step through what it is that we're doing. Um, we have games, like I said, here's, uh, one of the, uh, here's one of our welding symbols games. Um, about every six to seven minutes in our welding symbols course, we stop and give them a little game where they actually get to get a scenario where they're given um, a, a welding symbol to build or to deconstruct, and they're given all the components to actually build it. And you actually can sit there and play with it, and you drag and drop all these elements that you want to where you believe they should go to build this welding symbol. And if you ever put it into the wrong location, it bounces it back, you know, and it doesn't let you put it there. And then at, the, at some point, if you don't know what the correct answer is, you can just hit that little reveal answer, and it actually will go through an explanation and build the, the, the symbol for you and show you what it was supposed to look like and why. So right now, our, our current course offerings, we offer uh, welding fundamentals, uh, safety and welding, math for welders one and two, uh, understanding welding symbols, science for non-destructive testing, metallurgy for the non-metallurgist one, and welding economics. Uh, we have several courses that are going to be coming out very soon, which I'll touch upon in a second. One of the reasons that we did this, and Dennis kind of alluded to it um, in his introduction, was that when I came to AWS, one of, the, one of the most common questions I would get was, how do I become a CWI? You know, everyone wanted to know how to become a CWI. And I, I had no idea what to tell them. I, I know how to become a CWI. You take a test. You have to pass a test. You become a CWI. How do you gain that knowledge? Where do you go to school? Where do you learn the practical aspects of being a CWI? These are things that we weren't teaching. You know, we have a one-week seminar right now that we do that's an exam prep, but you can't learn how to be a CWI in one week. It's impossible. So where do you learn those fundamental skills? So what we decided to do was we wanted to build a pathway to become a CWI. We wanted to be able to take someone who was a welder and say, okay, we're going to give you all the foundational knowledge you need every step of the way that you would need over a period of time to become a CWI. And so what we did was we started to break it down. What are the key things that we need to learn? All right, so then we start building these courses little by little, and we're creating this pathway to the CWI. All right, so someone can start studying today, and over a period of, you could do it in five months if you want to, you can do it over five years. It doesn't really matter, but over a period of time, you're, you're gaining these fundamental, this fundamental knowledge you need to become a CWI. And our plan is to do this for all AWS certifications. So right now we have the pathway to CWI released, okay, and we're about to release uh, the pathway to the supervisor program, 
that's going to be coming out um, in August. So uh, the next one after that is going to be for the technician, you know, pathway to the technician or technologist. So uh, the idea is that we're going to build these pathways. We're going to give people, we're going to empower people to, to kind of take ownership of their education and what they need to become certified. Uh, here is a list of some of the upcoming courses. These courses are going to be coming out in the next, uh, I'm going to say in the next 12 to 18 months um, that are planned out. We have Lean Management 1 and 2. These are, these are for Lean Management certificate we're doing, and it's a supplement to our supervisor program. Uh, the welder qualification endorsement, this is going to be for CWIs that want to qualify welders and ATFs. Uh, Linda will talk a little bit more about all that stuff later. We're also going to be coming out with a free course uh, to help uh, schools and institutions that want to become an ATF through the process. Uh, we actually want a grant uh, through the uh, Department of Labor to build this, uh, this course. Uh, so we're going to be not only building it, but delivering it free for schools um, probably sometime early next year. Okay, it depends on a few other factors, but uh, it's going to be out very soon. We're building an ASME course, an advanced welding process course, Metallurgy 2, and a series of other code clinics. Uh, we're going to be doing railroad, bridge, uh, and aerospace uh, in the very near future. We're also in the process of translating a lot of our courses into the Spanish language. Um, we're also looking at doing it into Cantonese. Uh, no, not Cantonese. Ma Chinese. Yeah. Mandarin. Mandarin. Mandarin, sorry about that, uh, to Mandarin, um, which I am very much looking forward to. I can't, I mean, you could tell the excitement that I have about this. <laughs> uh, one of the questions I always get anytime I talk about uh, our online courses is, well, what if I have a question? Well, we do a couple of things. One, right there in the back corner of the room is, a, is, is an old friend of mine, Mr. Ed Bonart. Uh, Mr. Ed Bonard is a senior CWI, and I think Ed is the longest-running AWS instructor we have. Yeah, uh, Ed, Ed has been helping us out for the last few years. What Ed does is every Thursday night at 8 p.m., he does a webinar, an open webinar for any AWS student that wants to go online. And, and if they have any questions, Ed will bring up whatever class they're working on, bring up whatever they're having issues with, and teach them over this webinar. All right, so they have access to, a, to an instructor. Ed also provides them a lot of just general advice on how do, you know, how do you prepare. Other than taking the courses, what else can I do to prepare to become a CWI? What can I expect on the test? You know, what should I do the night before the test? Ed is there to provide advice and to help teach them. So he does the webinar uh, once a week, Thursday nights. Um, we have always left it open so that if we felt that we needed to do it more often, we'll do the webinar every night if we need to. You know, and we probably are going to need to start adding in additional days in the near future. The other thing we do is we have a built-in uh, email questioning system. So if you have a question, you can actually send us a question uh, right through the system. Uh, it'll send the email over to AWS staff. We'll route it to one of our instructors, and generally you'll have an answer within 12 to 24 hours. Uh, we also have a built-in uh, FAQ system that is growing little by little, and the idea is that as we get questions, about a course, we do two things. One is, if I keep getting questions about the same thing over and over, we go into the course and we change it. You know, we say, obviously, if people are having questions about this, we're not teaching it enough. So we either add content, rewrite the content, change it around, make sure that we're addressing whatever those questions are coming from. The other thing we do is that we will actually add it into the FAQ. Uh, the other thing that, uh, another thing that we uh, have started doing is virtual conferences. Uh, this is important for you guys as instructors because this is a great resource. How many people in here, and I'm just going to do a general show of hands, were able to att attend any of the last three years of the education annual program at Fabtech? One, two, three, three guys. OK, well, the great thing about this is that we, just like we're doing today, record all these presentations. OK, these are all education-related presentations by educators for educators. And we put them online. They're free of charge. You don't even have to register with AWS. You can just go onto the AWS website. You click under where it says conferences, and you'll see that it says educational conference, uh, educational annual uh, conference. We have the 2011 and 2012 up, and 2013 is going up, I believe, this month. So you'll be able to, to see all three years of those presentations, um, all, all, the, uh, all the, uh, the panel discussions, everything we put up there. 
um, is again designed to help educators improve the quality of education in this country. We're going to be doing the same thing with this, with these videos, by the way. Um, we have a blog, an education blog on AWO uh, that we put out two to three blogs a week. Uh, usually at least Tuesdays and Thursdays, there'll be a new blog up. Uh, the blogs are all education related. They're usually designed either for instructors or for students. There's a lot of great information there about jobs and what's going on in the marketplace, interviews with, 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 with companies and with individuals, schools, other teachers, best practices, case studies, all that kind of stuff. So I thoroughly encourage you to go on there, take a look at that blog, encourage your students to take a look at it. You know, again, you don't have to register, you don't have to log in, you don't have to do anything, you just go up there and grab it. You can stick it on your RSS feed if you're already getting an RSS feed and you're good to go. Uh, every Monday we put out a podcast. Okay, our podcast is based on the professional program that is held at Fabtech every year. And so the podcast is designed really as a way for us to disseminate some of the latest scientific information, research, products that are on the marketplace right now. And so what we do is we actually take the presentations, uh, we edit them in with whatever uh, information, videos, content that the speaker is using in the, in, the, uh, in the actual presentation. We make it available so you can watch it online, you can download it on your phone uh, or on your iPod you know, on your, on, on your tablet, you can, uh, you can subscribe to the RSS feed, whatever you want. Um, we also have an iTunes, um, we have an iTunes uh, library there, so you can actually subscribe through iTunes too if you use iTunes. And um, we get a pretty decent viewership on our, on our podcast every week. And some of the content's a little high level for most students, you know, but it is good for instructors um, to know this stuff, to know what's going on in the industry, what the latest research is. All these presentations are relevant and very recent. Um, and we put them out, like I said, pretty much every single Monday, year round. Uh, we also started back in November a newsletter for educators, letting you know, hey, th these are some of the things we've been doing on AWO. Uh, take a look at it. If you haven't seen it, here's some relevant information you want. Uh, we put it out. If you want to sign up for it, just go to the AWO site. And there's a free sign up there for the newsletter. You can see it once a month. And we don't bother you with any solicitation or anything like that. We're not asking you to buy anything. We're not trying to bother you. We're just trying to show you, hey, these are resources that you may have missed. Uh, all, all, the, uh, the AWO site is set up for mobile access, tablets, phones. It doesn't matter. It's adaptive technology. So whatever device you connect to any of that stuff on, it'll adapt to your needs. Um, but we're also in the process of developing a lot of different apps. One app that's already out right now is we have a CWI prep app. It was kind of a, uh, a, uh, a test case for us. We wanted to see how this would work and how people would react to it. And the idea was we, we put out about uh, seven or eight different pre-quizzes to help kind of study for the CWI. Um, in a, based on different topics, and we put them on, the, on an app uh, with, along with flashcards and some other uh, resources that you can use to study for the CWI to see how people would react to it. And um, what we found was that uh, it, has four star, it has a four-star rating as an app. Um, people really seem to like it, and actually people have gotten pretty angry at me for not putting more stuff online. Uh, pretty recently. So uh, we're actually in the process of adding in a whole bunch of new stuff to that app. But what we found is we wanted to see whether people would actually use something like this. And what we found was, yes, they will. And they like it and they use it. Uh, so we're now in the process of trying to support this even further and really starting to move a, a, a lot in this direction. Um, you're going to see very soon we're going to be putting out a, our first game, our first welding related game, Weld Hero. It's pretty cool. Um, I wish I had a video to show you, but I was, uh, we decided not to uh, because we're still in the, in the process of working on the 3D engine. It'll be a 3D welding related game. It will be a game. It's not a simulation. It's a game. It's designed for everyone. Uh, you'll be able to play it, uh, and it has some pretty cool functionality, and the best part about it is that the welder is the hero of the game. So uh, we're in the process of doing that stuff. The, the game the game's going to be coming out in October, uh, a few weeks before Fabtech. The, the technical launch of the game is going to be at Fabtech. That's where we're going to do the big launch of the game. Uh, but we are going to be releasing it on uh, Android and iOS in October. Um, another thing that we're doing now is, we're, we're, just like Carl did, uh, talked about yesterday, uh, AWS is a big supporter of Skills USA and World Skills. Uh, so one of the things we're doing is we're trying to uh, promote 
uh, Skills USA through a variety of different things. Uh, we have a bracketing system now where as state winners win their competitions, they can, the state uh, reps can send us the information and we'll put all this information up, and I'll show you now in a moment, into a, into a United States map where kids can actually look at all the different winners for all the different states and actually help like see them as they progress through the different competitions, all right, all the way through world skills. Um, we're adding in things like student blogging so that the, that the winners can actually blog about their experiences. Uh, we can take videos at the events. We can put that up there. Um, we're going to also start a process where we can broadcast to a wider audience when the local competitions are going to be held. One of the things that we found as a weakness is that um, there are a lot of schools that want to participate in World Skills, just don't know when or how. So one of the things we're doing in this section of the website is we're kind of trying to build out that functionality. So this is, uh, this is how it looks like when you look at a, a, a profile for a student um, all the way through. Alex, obviously, was a silver medal winner in Leipzig, Germany. Um, his profile, you can actually take a look at videos of Alex and pictures of Alex and things that he did, talk about him talking about uh, his experience. Et cetera. One of the other things we're doing with Alex right now is we're building out a video series. We actually already shot the series. We're in the editing process right now. Um, it's going to be about 12 to 14 videos. We're going to put them out on YouTube. They're going to be free of charge. Anyone can watch them. And they're basically step-by-step uh, -step how Alex prepared for, national, for the national competition. You know, uh, talking about how he welded the different pieces, uh, the techniques he used, uh, some of the settings he's using, things like that. Um, Here's a couple of screenshots of us shooting the videos and the actual videos themselves. Last couple of things before I wrap up. Um, Scholastic libraries, this is kind of relevant to you guys as educators. One of the things that we've been asked to do uh, by schools over the last year, Dennis and I have gotten this call many, many, many times, uh, is that they wanted a library of content that's designed specifically for students. Uh, to be able to use in a classroom. Uh, so we've been working towards that. This is something we're going to be releasing in January of 2015. Um, they're going to, it's going to be 60 plus hours of content as part of the library and, and every year we're going to be adding content to that library. Um, it's going to be short four, 15 to 20 minute modules. The idea being that we want to aid uh, the flipped classroom model if this is how people want to utilize it. Um, it's not a curriculum. It's not a whole curriculum, it's just a curriculum enhancer is what we call it. You know, it doesn't replace the idea that you have a curriculum, a teacher's guide, things like that. Uh, it's meant to really supplement what you do in the classroom with an online component as a means of helping teachers teach the STEM skills that are so crucial to welders, um, but they may not have the resources to do it. Um, interactive quizzes, games, uh, um, pre-assessments, Micro-credentialing is really one of the key things that we're doing is the stackable AWS credentialing system. Uh, the idea being that as students walk through your program, uh, they don't have to wait two, three years to get a degree. They actually can gain AWS credentials throughout the process by using the library system. We're also going to be releasing uh, in the very near future, uh, probably beginning of around the same time as the Scholastic Libraries, an AWS competency testing system. So you'll be able to use that in the classrooms if you want to, to help test student competencies. The reason we're doing this is really there were four barriers that we're trying to eliminate in the classroom. One is the limitations of time. Obviously, there's not enough time to cover all the STEM skills you need in a classroom and do all the shop time you need. So this allows you to use some of that information, do some of that work at home, some of that STEM skill at home through the online learning. Um, location, obviously, we, we run into issues in a lot of schools where there are more students than there are bays available. Uh, and so what one of the schools that we've been working with is doing is they have half their students uh, working on the online portion or the theory portion uh, through part of the day and then the other half in the lab and then they flip. And so they were able actually to accommodate twice the number of students with the same lab space. Uh, pace, you know, one of the great myths of education is that everyone learns at the same pace. You know, you can have a group of 30 people and you expect them all to learn exactly what it is you're trying to teach them in the time you're trying to teach them. It's not true. Uh, this allows students that need additional help to get additional help and students who are ahead of the game to stay ahead of the game. And finally, adaptability. Uh, it makes sure that the student has control of the learning, uh, the learning process, that the student is, has an ownership over their own education. 
Um, and again, like I was talking about, and we talked about a little bit yesterday by several different people, one of the reasons we're doing this is we're really trying to support the flipped classroom model when it comes to welding. The idea that a lot of this theory stuff can be done at home through an online system, and you can really focus the classroom portion of the theory on higher level thinking, on critical thinking, on really doing, you know, thinking about what it is you learned. You know, you can take a lot of that lecture component, make it in a format where the student wants to learn and is more comfortable in that type of format, and go ahead and use that classroom time to really have them think about what it is that they've learned, and then additional lab time, obviously. Last thing I want to mention was Sense Online. Steve kind of talked about it yesterday. Um, Every Sense school has access to Sense Online. It's free of charge. We do not charge you for your use. It's an online testing and tracking system. If you use Sense Online today, you will never have to send AWS a piece of paper other than your initial application to become a Sense school. You'll never have to send AWS another piece of paper. You'll be able to do everything online. Uh, it's a digital grade book and a digital testing system, so it allows you to keep, you know, you, you can assign the test to your students. The students can be in a well, in, in a, in, I'm sorry, in a computer lab. They can take their tests, it'll auto grade it, it'll auto populate it for you, or if you want to do paper and pencil tests, you can use it as a digital grade book. Now, it's more than a digital grade book because as you enter the information, it's already automatically assigned to the student's account at AWS. So you don't have to apply for graduation by sending us all this information. All you have to do to apply to graduate a student now is click a button. Okay? So I strongly encourage you, if you haven't taken a look at Sense Online, to go ahead to the, AW, uh, to the AWO site, take a look at Sense Online. There's a user manual there where you can see all different screenshots. Um, this is my contact info. Uh, I conveniently <coughs> left all my cards in Miami. Um, but uh, then I was then told, yeah, I was then told by Belkis that she had put uh, my business cards in each of your folders. So uh, you now know how to track me down. Um, but please don't track down Ivan. He's a lot easier to get a hold of than I am. Uh, I am at my desk for maybe 15 minutes a day. Ivan is there uh, a, a good portion of the time, and he's also our sense expert. So if you have any questions about sense or anything like that, go ahead and give Ivan a call. In all seriousness, if there's anything I can do to help you or your school, anything AWS can do, please give me a call. Please send me an email. Actually, email is the easiest way to get hold of me. But please send us a, a message. Let us know. We're more than happy to do whatever we can to help you guys. Our focus and our goal is really to make sure that you have the tools necessary to help build the future of welding. Thank you.